everybody, and this is JTrain997 here, and um, I just got out of the midnight premiere of The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, I usually have a group of the guys with this, but unfortunately everybody's busy, so I went solo. Strange that a movie gets released on a Monday night. I know I was getting texts from people, you know, all over going like, oh, it did it come out tonight? I'm sorry, I thought you meant Friday. Crap like that. Anyways, so the movie, um, I'm going to say right off the bat, it sets up so many plot lines. Like, plot lines that are not even touched for the rest of the movie, like, because everyone kept saying, oh, you're going to see so much more of Peter's parents, you're going to get so much more about, like, Peter's history and Peter's background. No, you don't. You get a little bit of setup, but that's, like, the whole driving force behind the next franchise, apparently, is going to be, like, Peter's parents and what his dad did and what his mom did, I guess, to a lesser extent, but... I don't know, I felt like there was a little too much of that. Like, you don't even see him catch Uncle Ben's killer. Like, I mean... Of course, you get to see Uncle Ben and, you know, the and all that jazz, but Uncle Ben's killer at the end of the movie, still out there. We don't know. Sequel, I guess. And, um, other than that, I mean, I really did enjoy it. The lizard, his overall look is still a problem with me, um, as is most people. I think that a lot of the big issues is that he, um, it's still the snout. Lack of a snout is still a huge issue with me. Sorry, people. But, um, once you hear him start talking and you see him start walking around, you really get the feel of where they were going for him. It's a little bit easier. Um, you know, I still think they could have done a little bit better job. His voice is very Voldemort-ish. I mean, I'm not a, the biggest Harry Potter fan in the world, but I was definitely getting twinges of that in his voice. Like, he sounds very Harry Potter villain-ish. Um, but I really did like it. Um, you know, we got to see a, the big first half of the movie, which really surprised me, is, um... They really did spend a good chunk of the movie telling Peter's origin. And I thought that was just going to be something we glanced over. And I mean, they retold it and they kept it fresh. You know, I mean, we get to see web shooters. We kind of get to see the whole, you know, uh, I'm sticking to things and, you know, where he kind of gets his mask and his costume from and things like that. You know, we still don't actually have a scene of him making the costume, which is what gets me. Because I'm like, there's no way you just get a box of spandex and slap that thing together. Um, I think, I saw it in 3D. It has some interesting moments in 3D. I think it was filmed in 3D. Is it, you know, a die hard, like, if you're going to see the movie, you can't see it in 2D? No. You know, it's either way, but I, you know, if you're going to go, if you're going to go and you have the extra cash, definitely see it in 3D. Um, the fight scenes are really well choreographed. I think him moving through the sea, I mean, that was probably what my favorite thing about the first Spider-Man trilogy, was how he moved through the city and interacted, and, you know, and going back and rewatching those, it's a little bit dated, so it's nice to see him update that, and that's... The especially nice part in 3D is you get a lot of first-person web swinging, first-person crawling. You know, if you're easily motion sick, that might be an issue. Um, I do have one tiny problem with the whole setup, because the whole thing, it, it was like, oh, by the end you know who the next villain is. They're name-dropping Norman Osborn from the beginning, and then at the end you get the whole... This isn't a spoiler, because I saw this on a TV spot. A TV trailer I actually put this in, so I don't think it's a spoiler. If it is, you blame Marvel, not me. It's like the, the Kirk Connors is in a prison cell, and you just see this guy standing in the shadows, and it's like, did you tell the boy about his father? You don't get a name. You don't even see a face. Stupid bitches. Hold on one second, guys. Hey, sorry, guys. Some bitch almost dinged my truck. Anyways, um, don't park so close to people in movie theaters. Long story short, um, I did enjoy it. Um, I don't know. There's something in me that tells me I'm going to enjoy this film like a little bit less each time I rewatch it, mainly because I had that with the original trilogy. I saw it there, it's like, yeah, Spider-Man, these movies kick ass. And you know, I go back and I watch it, and I'm like, man, eh, the special effects in this are crap. And eh, man, this is depressing. And you know, it's not that I have any of those problems immediately with this film, it's just that nagging feeling like maybe I'm going to look back on it. Um, because I do feel like, you know, there's a big chunk in the beginning that's going to be hard to get through the next time through, because it was hard to get through this time. I know Peter's origin. I read the comics. I saw the last movies. You know, I think that's going to be the big thing. You know, you, people want to get to Spider-Man, and they want to get to the lizard fight. I did think they had the whole thing set up where it's like lizards turning people into lizards. I wanted to see Spider-Man fight, you know, teams of lizard people and that crap. And you don't get that. You get the one lizard, and, you know, they're changing, but you don't get a fight. Um, like I said before, I don't even know if that was supposedly Norman Osborn in the end. I mean, I don't see who else it could be. But, I mean, I really didn't get a setup. I mean, I think signs are really pointing strongly towards Ultimate Goblin. You know, the big monster goblin we're going to get. 
Um, but you know, judging by that one little two second exchange in the prison, I don't see that, you know, that wasn't a big, you know, this is the sequel for me. And, you know, granted, I don't need that. You know, it wasn't any kind of a Thanos at the end of Avengers setup. But a little bit more would have been appreciated. I mean, we didn't even see Norman's face. We didn't see whoever it was his face, so we don't really know. But, um, anyways. So, this has been JTrain 997 with my midnight first thoughts and almost a smackdown on some chick who almost ding my truck. Anyways. I still highly recommend going to see it. I will say it's probably, you know, it's my favorite out of the Spider-Man movies so far. I feel like that's saying, I don't feel like that's saying enough because I did look back on the other movies and I don't have them, like, highly ranked in my mind. Like, they're, you know, they're good. They're worth owning, except for the third one. But, you know, this one and two are probably tied in my book, and I feel like this one's getting the edge because it's updated. It's got the flashy new look. It's got the new, you know, villains. It's got the interesting setup, and, ooh, where's it going to go? And, you know, it's so cool to watch him move around. You know, I don't know in the future how I'm going to feel about that. But it's still, uh, you know, see it in the theaters in my book, and that being said, this is JTrain997, and I'll see you soon, YouTube.